stayed in the Valdosta High School or Valdosta City School System. I've raised three children. I was in it, started in fifth grade. That's uh, Mason. Uh, I uh, have done fairly well for myself in spite of some of my reckless conduct as a youth. <laughs> the, uh, my kids have all done well. I have a daughter who's 27, graduated ninth in her class at Valdosta High. She's a physician's assistant. I have a son who graduated 15th in his class at Alaska High. He is graduating uh, this, uh, this summer from the uh, University of Georgia. He's been offered employment with uh, PricewaterhouseCooper, one of the four top um, accounting slash consulting firms in the world. Uh, I have another daughter who's at Alaska State studying to be a physical therapist. I have a son who has special needs and has, a, has Down syndrome. All of my children have flourished in the Valdosta City School System. Um, JP with his Down Syndrome has flourished in the Valdosta School System. The uh, special ed program they have here is second to none. Uh, we initially entered that program ready to fight, only to find out that they really care. Mm -hmm. And it's been a real easy process for us. Um, when I look at these things, when people talk about consolidation, I have to ask the question, why do they want to consolidate two school systems? The things that they say sound good. I think everything they say would be agreeable to every citizen. The question is what do they mean by that? And I have a little bit of a problem when two, well, somebody wants to combine two groups together so it almost looks like they want to control the whole. Um, what we have here is we have two excellent school systems. They quote uh, different statistics, but they don't say what those statistics mean. And uh, <coughs> statistics, we can make statistics say whatever we want to make it say. Um, and so you have to ask the question, if you're saying this statistic here, you have to ask what does it mean, what's the significance, and what you're bringing to the table, what does it say to change that? Well, I've gone and researched the, i tried to keep an open mind about this, and I have researched uh, and read and listened to the audio tapes. Uh, it seems like uh, the group that's most pushing this thing is referring to the Tennessee Hamilton County uh, system, which if you read their site, sounds real good. It sounds like their statistics are good and everything's working good. Except that there's a, some, some data that came out a month ago that says that they are, for the first time, the entire district is high priority. So you have to ask the question, is this the model we want to use? And that raises my mind, when we were, I had my oldest daughter was in school here, in first grade. She was in the 90th percentile. She, uh, her grammar, spelling, and all that was very good. Uh, we moved over to another county, I'll name the county, and they had implemented whole language. And whole language, uh, we said, oh, this sounds great. They're going to be creative and they're going to write. Except I start getting papers back that have misspelled words for my daughter, bad grammar. And when we asked the teacher about it, we were told, well, you know, if you spend your time correcting those things, you actually are, are inhibiting their whole language and their ability to communicate as a whole. Well, as parents, we're going, but she can't spell, she can't be grammar. <laughs> and then, then we say, well, what about the standardized test? Well, you see, we don't teach standardized testing. Uh, that just teaches them how to take that test. We want to see their progress from the beginning to the end. And, of course, she was in the 90th percentile. They took their tests, and she comes out in the 70th percentile. So now she can't spell, she can't write, and she's in the 70th percentile, and we're supposed to be happy about that. So we then moved, came back to the Dallas City School System. Once we got in the school system, within a year, her spelling's proper, her grammar's proper, she's in the 90th percentile again. She stayed that way. She graduated ninth grade class, she graduated magna cum laude, she went to uh, physician's assistant school early, and she graduated as now physician's assistant. Point being is this. We have a system that works here for those who want it to work for them. The real question is, is the graduation rates. What they're proposing doesn't resolve the graduation rate issue at all. In fact, what they want to do is consolidate it all together, which, by the way, the way they're wanting to do this by us giving up our charter is like a train wreck waiting to happen. Because you're just going to force it on everybody and shut everybody in and say, okay, now make it work. 
What about the children during this time? Who's going to be sacrificed for this process? What happens when we give up our charter and now it doesn't work? It's a total failure. Just like our open classrooms were out in Dallas to High, which I was in, I've taught in it. Uh, total disaster. Uh, you know, then we've got to go back and spend a bunch of money to fix it all. One thing you can't do, you may be able to fix a building out there, but you can't fix getting your charter back. You give that charter up, 118 years of excellent education down the tubes. Gone. And then we go, uh, we want it back. Too late. And they're over there going, sorry, it didn't work. And that's, what, that's what's going to happen when this thing is forced. If somebody comes to me and gives me a good reason for consolidation, meaning we have uh, community discussions, we have clear facts set out, and they can prove to me that this is going to be good for the children. Yep. And everybody can work together as a whole, both communities. And maybe I change my mind. But right now, what I see is a group that wants to force <coughs> another educational experiment on our children. And the first thing they got to do is they've got to uh, consolidate it all and get rid of the Dallas City School System. As soon as that happens, then they're going to do their experiment. They're going to start pushing and pushing and pushing get this experiment in place. Sounds real good on paper, but we're now seeing Hamilton County, Tennessee is a failure. Half of the school, less than half of the schools met AYP. That district, Hamilton County, for the first time ever, is now at, in high priority. And that means they've had two years of bad results. One more minute, Mr. All right. And uh, so basically, <laughs> I've said what I have to say. Uh, this is a system that I'm proud of. I'm proud of every board member on here. I've been supportive of everything that you've done. I've looked on our websites. I've seen everything that we do. I've looked at all the other education websites. There's nothing they're offering that we don't already offer. There's nothing that, we, that, we, that we're not offering that we couldn't offer very simply. We don't need consolidation to offer. So having said that, my position is against consolidation. At this time, if you force it by just having the, the city come in with lack of knowledge, get rid of your charter, and it fails, then what are you going to tell all the, all the people and all the children? What about the children who, who get sacrificed in the process? I'm happy with it. I want to stay just like it is. Thank, Thank you. you.